Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, uh, we do lift up the well. We do lift up these places that, that uh, you have provided through your people. You have provided these places where just people can come and, and know that, that the, world does not, the world is unfulfilling. We, try to, we, we, we spend so much time and so much effort in this life trying to get the world to bring us fulfillment, but it will never bring us fulfillment. It is only what we find in you is where we truly find fulfillment. It is only that well that we drink from and that well that you freely offer. Lord, we just pray, and, 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 and so goes. It's, it's the same thing when we think about the, the school system, Lord, and we think about all those kids and all the problems and all the troubles that they may be having, Lord. And, and it's because, it's because uh, usually it's because their home life and, the, and their parents have tried to fill their lives with what the world has offered, Lord, but it is not the answer, and they, and, and they are suffering the consequences because of it. Lord, help us show them where the well is. Help us to be able to dig that well and provide that well. Lord, that's why we're your people. We're your kingdom. And we're praying that we pray that we're able to do that, Lord. Show us the way. Lead us, Lord, in the way that we are to dig those wells. Lord, we just ask today that you just be with us as we open up the word and as we study today, Lord. That we, that we grow from what you have, Lord. Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit to move amongst us, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord. Change us, transform us, whatever it is, Lord. Take from us, Lord, what, 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 we, what we need to, as that song says at the beginning, what we need to leave behind. There's so much stuff in our life we just need to leave behind, and we just don't think that we can. But we can leave it behind. Just leave it behind. And let's look to you this morning, Lord, and let's just change our life. Let's just do it today. Let's just change our lives as we look to you and as we drink from that well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. <coughs> All right. Hey, um, if you have your uh, phones, you find your sermon notes on version, And um, we have bulletins on the back table. And we put our, uh, our sermons on YouTube. Be sure and uh, check those out if you can. Share them with somebody. Uh, I want to be um, I want to be respectful this morning because well because I'm talking about Jesus. <laughs> it's good to be respectful when you're talking about Jesus. But uh, I want to go to, to the 23rd chapter of Matthew this morning. That's where everything's going to come from. Is the 23rd chapter of Matthew. And I call it, respectfully, I call it the rant in red. And I forgot to check this. Well, we'll find out if, I, if this red will work. But um, the chapter, Matthew 23, is basically completely red. If you have a red letter Bible. It's basically everything in it Jesus said. But before we get there, before we get to the 23rd chapter, uh, as always... You know me, context, context, context. Let's find out what happened before chapter 23. Let's go back as far as chapter 21, and we find the triumphal entry. It's where Jesus uh, enters into uh, Jerusalem. And, uh, and then after that, we find Jesus cleansing the temple. That's where he took the whip, and he, he brought the money changers and everybody out of the temple. So now that he's got everybody good and stirred up, all right, they're, they're, they're calling him Hosanna and all this. He's coming into Jerusalem, and then, he's, and then he's cleared out the temple and turned the tables over, and, and so stuff is going on, all right? Jesus is here. So then we find that the, uh, the religious leaders, they are starting some theological attacks. Uh, with Jesus. And Jesus, uh, of course, it's kind of hard to argue the word with the word, but uh, Jesus does not back down. He faces them and he, he faces them with the truth. And to give you an idea of how well this was received by those that were trying to attack him, I want to read the last two verses of chapter 21. Matthew 21, 45 through 46. 
It says, Now when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard the parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. Now the Bible, the Bible certainly mentions places where you lay hands on and pray for people, but I don't think this is the kind of laying hands on that these guys had in mind when they were talking about Jesus. It was a little different kind of laying hands on. They wanted to get rid of him, but, uh, but they feared the people. So Jesus obviously came back with the truth and put him in their place. And then we find uh, in chapter 22 where the attacks continue. They, you know, they continue to attack Jesus, trying to trip him up. But uh, I'm going to read um, the very last verse of chapter 22, and it gives us an idea of how well that went. And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare question him anymore. Okay. You try to, uh, you try to trip Jesus up, um, it don't work, does it? It don't work when you try to, to uh, use the word against the word. Man, I have got a thread that's, no, I don't have a shirt here. Man. Okay. So now, now we're in chapter 23. All right. And respectfully, Jesus lets loose. Okay? Jesus lets loose in chapter 23, and I, 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 I wish I knew the demeanor of Jesus during chapter 23. You know, um, history and all kind of tells us that, that at the time, that they kind of did it differently with the teaching, that the, 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 the teacher actually sat and the people listening stood. We need to try that one Sunday. Wouldn't that be good? You like that idea? But uh, uh, and, and we actually have some churches. We have some churches, the Church of God, that that they they are adopting that to where the preacher sits. Everyone, you know, he just preaches from a sitting position every Sunday. Uh, of course, the congregation doesn't have to stand; they can sit too. But uh, but I don't know. In chapter and, and and I think this we can probably see this in the Bible where Jesus sat and taught. But in chapter 23, I just can't see Jesus sitting down. I just can't see him sitting down. I, 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 you know, did he have, you know, we see movies and stuff of Jesus. And, and was, he, was he calm? Was he, you know, was he, did he ever raise his voice? Did, I don't know. But in chapter 23, <laughs> we will, you'll find a lot of exclamation marks, okay? Um, I think he let them have it. Now, now, I want to read, uh, this is a lot of reading. Please bear with me. I know that it's easy to lose people when you start reading a lot. But uh, I wanted to read the whole chapter, but I've cut some of the chapter out. But it's still, there's still a lot to it. But just think about it. Just think about it. Try to Try to get a picture of Jesus. Jesus Christ, okay? As he's doing this. Okay, here we go. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 23, uh, just basically Matthew 23. When Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit at Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not according to their works. For they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move <clears throat> them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen by men, they take their phylactery, they, they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge their borders of their garments. They love the best places at feasts, they, the best seats at the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not call, but you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven, and do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, 
And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now that would get him stirred up just a little bit. Okay? Now, he starts in. This is Jesus Christ saying, But woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. Now, now, now think about this a minute. The Pharisees and the scribes, they were the religious leaders. They were the people who had respect. And, 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 and really, if you, if you cross these guys, you could get banished from the church, which was, which was a big thing. Okay? It wasn't like you could just go to the next church. It was a little different than that back then. He's saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go into yourself, and for you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. He basically says, you're not going to heaven, and you're not allowing the people that's entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive a greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. But when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourself. <laughs> Woo! Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. For you pay a tithe of mint and ancy and cumin and, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, like justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides, you strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup, of the cup and dish, but the inside are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you like whitewashed for you like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside you are full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Can you imagine? what the scribes and Pharisees thought about this. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourself that... <clears throat> that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore indeed I send you prophets, wise men, scribes, some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that on you may come all the righteous blood shed of the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Ber Berhishak, whatever, whom, the, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Surely I say to you all, these things will come upon this generation. That's a lot to read, but man, this is Jesus, okay? And, 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 and who is Jesus talking to here? He's not really talking to the scribes and Pharisees, is he? He's talking to the people. He starts out by saying, whatever they tell you to do, they're the guys in charge. Do what they do, but don't do like they act. They don't practice what they preach. Okay? Now, according to this description that I've just read, that we receive from Jesus, what would a Pharisaical church look like? And that's number one. Surely, surely we wouldn't have churches today that would reflect this, right? We won't have Pharisaical churches today, right? What would a Pharisaical church look like? It would be one that abuses their position in ministry. 
by creating a false authority between themselves and others. Because of my position, I'm better than you. I deserve better than you because of my position. Whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. A pharisaical church would be a church that, that creates their own self-righteousness and then teaches it to others. What would that, what would that be like? Um, maybe, maybe it would be something like, you know, the, in our church, we do it all right. We've got everything figured out and all the stuff that we do is right, unlike the church down the street. Unlike them. Because we have the salvation and they do not. Boy, I'm glad we don't have churches like that today. It would be one where money and possessions become a greater priority than people. A pharisaical church would be one that would have an impressive evangelistic outreach only to teach a selfish gospel. If we're going to put our name out there, if we're going to put our name out there as an outreach, boy, we're going to do it great. We're going to do it big. Everybody's going to see it. They're going to think what a great church that is. Only to preach a gospel that says we're the only ones. We're the only ones. A pharisaical church would be one where the people are more concerned with the minor differences in doctrine that separate believers rather than following the great commandment just to love one another unconditionally. Man, if they don't believe just exactly the way we do. A pharisaical church would be one where God's people are willing to do great acts of charity for the poor and for the needy, but they would never keep company with those in which they do the charity for. I'm glad we don't have churches like that today. I'm glad people in God's kingdom aren't like that today, right? We'd be all glad about, we'll raise all kinds of money and, 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 and we'll do all these, these fundraisers and, and we'll help the poor and we'll help the needy and we'll help the bum on the street. But if they come in and sit to, next to us in our pew, we might sit somewhere else. I'm glad we don't have people like that today. Christians are not like that, right? I'm glad the Pharisaical church is only for way back then. The Pharisaical church would be one that refuses to listen to the truth, especially if it means to embrace change, yet it continues to embrace tradition at the cost of change we might bring more people in if we change the way we do something we might bring more people in but we're not going to change because we've always done things this way we're not going to change I think it's obvious that Jesus did not approve of the pharisaical church in the Bible times and I think it's pretty obvious that Jesus does not approve of the Pharisaical church in our modern times. So I think then probably the appropriate question would be, what is the opposite of the Pharisaical church? And what's missing in it? And that's number two. You know, if we go back to chapter 22 in Matthew, we find what they called a lawyer back then, a teacher of the law, Asking Jesus, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And what did Jesus say? He replied by saying, To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. To love Him completely. And, 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 and then the next commandment is like the first. To love your neighbor as yourself. What is the one element that changes everything? What is the one element that would change a pharisaical church into a loving Christ-centered church? 
What is that one element? It's love. It's love. So you see the scribes, the Pharisees, they, they had all the knowledge. They had everything. They had all the knowledge. They had all the tools. They had the obedience of most of the people. They had everything except the most important element. And this is what Jesus, this is what the rat in red is all about. Jesus just went into detail, but, it, but really if he could, he could have just summed it up and said, you know what their problem is? They don't love God. They love their self more than they love God. And you can never, you can never have love for others unconditionally unless you love God first. And that's the problem. That's the difference between a Christ-centered loving church and the Pharisaical church. It's love. It's, it, it's genuine love. And it's got to start with a love for God. It is the number one undeniable element. <clears throat> so, <laughs> where does that leave us? You know, the Bible tells us that Christians are a world priesthood, doesn't it? Kind of puts us all in the same boat. Are we pharisaical? Jesus, surely when he was doing his rant in red, he surely wasn't talking about us, right? It was only those guys way back then. One of the main reasons why, you know, let me say this first. If you were to poll the world and say, what is it about Christians? What, what, how would you describe Christians? What are some things that you would describe Christians? And probably most people would say Christians are all about family. Christians are all about having, having good families, strengthened families. And you know what? That's a great thing. We should be all about family. But do we go farther than that? I think sometimes the strength of the Christian is also sometimes the weakness of the Christian. It's because we'll absolutely do everything for our families, but will we do anything outside of our family? We have love like you've never seen inside of our families, but will we reach outside of our families? You know, one of, the, one of the main things, one of the, our main reasons or excuses <laughs> we use for uh, maybe not, not reaching people with God's love and not being a Pharisaical church is because of our busy schedules. And believe me, I get it. I understand busy schedules. But I got a question to ask you this morning. Would our lives really change? Would we engage with people outside of our families more if our schedules wasn't so busy? What if all of a sudden our schedules just opened up? Okay? We only got to work half the hours. The, the kids finally got out of sports and all that stuff, that, you know, the ball games and all that junk. And our, our schedules just opened up. What would you do with your time? Would you engage outside of your family more? Or would you just spend more time with your family? Would you, would you go to the well? Would it really change? Guys, you can come on up. How many of you have ever said, you know the problem with kids and teenagers today is, is that all they ever think about is the here and now. That's their, own, that's, that's their whole concept, is, is what is going on here and now. They never think about the future. They never understand that the decisions that they're making right now will affect their future. Did you ever say that? About kids and teenagers? 
Well, I'm glad only kids and teenagers think that way, right? I don't know about you, but I have a great burden for the church tomorrow. I have a great burden for the next generation. And the older I get, the older I get, I realize how quick that next generation becomes leaders. Really quick, doesn't it? I used to think, I, I used to think it was odd to say, yeah, I remember something that happened 20 years ago. <laughs> it's, not, it's nothing anymore. I used to think raising my kids would take like this whole lifetime. But we're just like that, isn't it? And all of a sudden they got kids. The next generation, those kids we just seen walking out, they're going to be leaders. They're going to be leaders before you know it. What kind of church are they going to lead? And we hope that they all are, all are leaders in churches. But you see, the only church that they, they know to lead is the one that they grow up in. It's the example that we leave for them. That's the only church that they're going to know. That's the only thing that they're going to know to do is what they've seen. Unless somebody finally comes around and says, hey, maybe try something different. And that happens sometimes. But it's just like, it's just like our own lives. It's just like getting married. It's just like getting married. The, the home that our children are raised in is training them for their future home. Whether the parents think of it that way or not, it is. And whether it's a good training or whether it's a bad training, it's training them for their future home. What those kids are going through, that's all they know then as far as a home. And when they start making their own home, that's the only example they have. And it is the same way in the church. That the church that, that, that they are being raised in, the only church that they are seeing, is all they know when they become leaders of the church, how to lead. And my question this morning is, are they seeing a pharisaical church, or are they seeing a church that is centered on Jesus Christ, that loves God, and that loves others? And if you say that they are seeing a church that loves God and loves others, give me some examples. Tell me some stories. Where people are reaching out unconditionally and helping people and showing love and spending time outside of their own family units. This is a hard message, but let me tell you, Jesus gave a hard message in, in Matthew 23. Where's the examples? I want to hear them. Or are we just going through the motions? And are we just feeding our families? So think about that this morning is. It's like I always say, come pray. I appreciate my prayer team that I already got. And they've been praying for me. I love it. If anybody else wants to be a part of that, let me know. Come this morning. And how is it? And I, I, I invite you to read Matthew 23. Does that look like us? And if it does, how can we change it? How can we love God and love others more? Think about this one. Come if you want.